In this module, you will learn about the male reproductive organs of a flower. Whether in gardens or wild corners of the earth, flowers lend an indescribable charm to the surroundings in which they grow. Widely used as objects of ornamental, social, religious and cultural value, Flowers also are sites of sexual reproduction. Flowering is a major phase in the life cycle of a plant and takes place when the climate is congenial for pollination and the formation of seeds. This phase is however preceded by several physiological and morphological changes induced by hormones such as florigen present in the leaves. These changes lead to the differentiation of vegetative buds into floral buds and the development of the floral primordium, the rudimentary or preliminary stage of the flower or the flowering shoot. This primordium either bears a solitary floral bud or inflorescences that bear multiple floral buds. The buds bloom into a flower, a modified shoot with shortened internodes and nodes. From these nodes arise four modified leaf like structures called whorls, which are arranged on the swollen end of a stalk called the thalamus. The whorls include the andricium, gynecium, calyx, that consists of sepals, and lastly, the corolla, comprising the petals. The calyx and corolla, referred to as the perianth, are bright and colorful to attract insect pollinators. The gynecium, on the other hand, which consists of one or many carpels or pistils, represents the female reproductive part, whereas the andricium, which consists of a whirl of stamens, is the male reproductive part of the flower. Though the number and size of stamens in an andricium differ across species of flowers, the basic structure remains the same. Every stamen, for instance, consists of a filament and an anther. The filament is a long and slender stalk whose proximal end is attached either to the thalamus or the petal of the flower. The anther, on the other hand, is bilobed in nature, with each lobe being dithecus or consisting of two thecas that are separated by a longitudinal groove that runs through the anther. The transverse section of the anther reveals that its lobes form a four-sided or a tetragonal structure. In the corner of each lobe is the microsporangium, a sac-like structure which is nearly circular in outline. In a young anther, the microsporangium is surrounded by a multi-layered wall consisting of the epidermis, endothecium, middle layers, and the trapetum, the innermost layer, while the center is occupied by sporogenous tissue. The epidermis, endothecium, and middle layers protect the microsporangium as well as aid in dehiscence, which is the splitting of the anther walls that causes the release of pollen grains. While the tapetum, whose binucleate cells possess dense cytoplasm, nourishes the developing pollen grains, the sporogenous tissue, on the other hand, 
consists of a group of compactly arranged homogeneous diploid cells called microspore mother cells or pollen mother cells. These microspore mother cells divide meiotically to form haploid microspores which arrange themselves in a tetrad. The process of formation of microspores meiotically from a microspore mother cell is called microsporogenesis. As the anther begins to mature, both the microsporangium and microspores undergo changes. While the microsporangium develops into the pollen sacs that extend longitudinally through the length of the anther, the microspores separate from the tetrad and develop into pollen grains. Thus, the anther contains thousands of pollen grains which undergo mitosis to form two unequal cells. The larger cell, known as the vegetative cell, is characterized by a large, irregular-shaped nucleus, vacuoles, and abundant food reserves. While the smaller cell, known as the generative cell, is distinctly spindle-shaped and possesses dense cytoplasm. Moreover, the generative cell floats in the cytoplasm of the vegetative cell. Did you know that the vegetative cell and generative cell represent the two-celled stage of the pollen grain? Later, the generative cell undergoes mitotic division to produce two male gametes. The pollen grain is now said to be at the three-celled stage. After the formation of pollen grains, the endothecial cells lose water, which leads to tension in their cell walls. This tension causes the dehiscence or bursting of the anther along the line of dehiscence and results in the shedding of several thousand pollen grains. Are you aware that in cereals such as jowar, the pollen grains are shed at the three-celled stage, whereas in 60% of angiosperms, which include plants such as hibiscus, the pollen grains are shed at the two-celled stage? Pollen grains, which represent the male gametophyte, come in a wide variety of sizes, shapes, and colors. A typical pollen grain, however, is spherical in shape and has a diameter measuring about 25 to 50 micrometers. It is surrounded by two layers of wall exine and intine. Exine, the hard outer layer, is made up of sporopollenin, a tough organic material capable of resisting high temperatures and strong acids, alkalis and all natural enzymes. Hence, pollen can be well preserved as fossils. However, sporopollenin is not present in the germ spore, an aperture present in the exine through which we see the germination of the pollen tube. Intine, on the other hand, is a thin and continuous inner layer of wall composed of cellulose and pectin. On the inner side of the intine, is the plasma membrane that surrounds the pollen grain's cytoplasm. When pollen grains land on the stigma, they germinate into a pollen tube that carries the male gametes towards the embryo sac. 
This ability of the pollen grain to deliver the male gametes to the embryo sac is called pollen viability. However, factors such as temperature and humidity affect pollen viability. Moreover, pollen grains of different plants have different periods of viability. Pollen grains of cereals, such as wheat and rice, lose their viability within 30 minutes of their release. Whereas pollen grains of some members of Rosaceae, Leguminaceae and Solanaceae remain viable for months. Pollen grains, which play a vital role in plant reproduction, are also often consumed by human beings as they are rich in nutrients. Pollen products, in the form of tablets and syrups, are commonly spotted on shelves of supermarkets. Moreover, pollen is also stored in pollen banks in liquid nitrogen at 196 degrees centigrade. The pollen is later used in plant breeding programs. Pollen grains, however, can trigger allergies in some people and can cause asthma and bronchitis. In fact, the weed carrot grass or Parthenium hysterophorus and its pollen found in non-cultivated lands in Punjab causes allergies such as eczema, dermatitis and other skin diseases. Pollen, formed inside the stamen, plays an important role in plant propagation and also serves as a source of nutrition, although in some cases, it may trigger allergies. You have now reached the end of this module. In this module, you learnt that the flower is a modified shoot with shortened internodes. The andresium, a whorl of stamens, is the male reproductive part of a flower. The stamen consists of a bilobed anther and a filament. Each lobe contains a microsporangium that is surrounded by a multi-layered wall consisting of the epidermis, endothecium, middle layers and the tapetum. The center of the microsporangium is occupied by sporogenous tissue made up of microspore mother cells. Microspore mother cells divide meiotically to form microspores by a process called microsporogenesis. The microspores separate from the tetrad and develop into young pollen grains, the male gametophyte of a flowering plant. <laughs>